Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS MiG-29A Fulcrum video, we'll discuss the defensive systems of the Fulcrum, the SPO-15 LM Radar 1 Receiver, or RWR, and the countermeasure defensive system, or the CMDS. We'll also discuss some of the mission editor options in the data transfer cartridge, or DTC, settings. The SPO-15 LM version is an older RWR that detects radar signals in the centimeter band that provides the pilot notification of hostile radar signals in search and track modes. It does not provide launch indications minus a single SAM type not currently in DCS. It provides indications of threat azimuth, radar mode, search track, threat type, highest priority, threat closure, estimated weapon employment zone of the SAMs, and relative elevation to your aircraft. This RWR can detect radar emitters operating between 4.45 and 10.354 gigahertz in overlapping sectors and plus or minus 30 degrees in elevation. Note that the RWR has blind spots directly above and below the aircraft, at long range, and is less sensitive and accurate to emissions of beam the aircraft. As such, it cannot be relied upon for accurate notching maneuvers. Please also note that this version of the Fulcrum did not support full synchronization between the radar and the RWR. Thus, the RWR cannot detect and process threats in the forward hemisphere when the radar is radiating. Let's get started. I'm here over Groom Lake in the Nevada Desert as part of a Foreign Materials Exploitation, or FME, of the MiG-29. Let's first talk about the RWR. I'm going to go over the basic, practical applications. If you really want to get into the weeds of its operation, I've linked a white paper on this topic. As discussed in previous Fulcrum videos, the SPO 15 LM is in the bottom right corner of the instrument panel. Forward of the navigation panel, though, is the SPO 15 power switch and the switch to filter out radars operating in search mode. To the left is the SPO 15 volume knob. Based on some of the user videos I've seen, some of you guys really may want to start using that knob. The bottom right portion of the SPO 15 panel is the brightness knob then the manual and automatic test switch in the center, and the audio warning disable light that is lit when the SPO-15 volume knob is set to zero. We discussed the automatic and manual tests in the Fulcrum startup, taxi, and takeoff video, but I'll include a card and a link in the video description. Above the test, brightness, and audio status light is a listing of six radar types that are indicated as green letters. Moving from left to right. Low pulse repetition frequency or LPRF radars that are equipped with a continuous wave illuminator. Such an indication is indicative of a missile launch with CW illumination like an F-4E or a ship equipped with an AG system and SM-1 missiles. This appears as a PI type indication. When such radars in search mode, they can appear as a C-type indication that we'll discuss in a bit. The next symbol is for short-range AAA and SAMs, like the Vulcan, Gepard, and Shilka tracking radars, not search, and some naval air defense radars. Note that the tracking radar would need to be in the frequency band covered by the SPO-15, and this does not include the search radars for such units. Further, the tracking radars are often quite short-ranged, and they can easily fall within the blind zone below the aircraft if the aircraft's altitude is too high. This appears as a three-type symbol indication. To the right is the type of the Hawk SAM using continuous wave. This type can also appear when other HPRF or MPRF radars are detected at low power levels, like many fourth generation fighter aircraft radars. This appears as an X type indication. If the X type symbol is flashing, it indicates a low power mode 
search or a scan period that does not match the Hawk SAM radar. Next is type for a tracking Nike Hercules SAM system, which is currently not in DCS. But in automatic mode, this can also indicate other long range SAM systems. This appears as an H symbol. However, for SAMs like Patriot and S300, they will also indicate as a flashing X when in search mode. The F-type symbol is a common one, and it generally indicates a fourth generation fighter aircraft in HPRF or MPRF at closer ranges. This includes aircraft like the F-14, the F-16, the F-18, the F-15, and others. At longer ranges, they may first appear as a flashing X type symbol. Last is the symbol type for LPRF radars equipped with continuous wave illuminator but operating in search mode. This can also indicate a radar track with no continuous wave illumination. This appears as a C type symbol. Note that these types are not specific to a particular radar and platform, but rather the radar form that can cover several different types of radars. The Smooth 15 does not magically detect radars, but rather the radar frequency must occupy the frequency spread of 4.5 to 10.354 gigahertz, with a few exceptions. Also, keep in mind that friendly radars can also potentially be detected as threats, despite not being in the threat library. This is particularly true for HPRF radar detections. Further, radar signals can overlap along similar azimuths and threat prioritizations may suffer. Above the radar type symbols are a series of amber lights. The type that is the highest threat will have a light illuminated above it. The priority threat is saved for 8 to 12 seconds if the radar is in search mode and 2 to 4 seconds if the radar is in track mode. The order of threat priority from highest to lowest is radar in track mode, threat within altitude and azimuth, like nose on being a higher threat, threat is outside altitude and azimuth, PRF is above 800 hertz, and the highest signal power. The azimuth of the priority threat is indicated by one of the 10 lamps around the aircraft symbol, eight in the forward hemisphere and two in the rear quarters. Inside this arc of priority lights is a similar arc of smaller green lights that indicate threat azimuth indications. The system can distinguish between a radar in search or track mode and a radar in track mode will take priority. A tracking detection triggers a red light in the center of the panel in a steady, high-pitched tone. As mentioned earlier, this version of the SPO-15 cannot alert to missile launches outside the Nike Hercules SAM, which is currently not in DCS. The inner ring around the aircraft symbol indicates the estimated signal strength of the priority threat emitter. The more two decibel elements illuminated in the ring equates to a higher peak power out from the priority threat radar. A flashing ring element that corresponds to the weapon deployment zone indicates when you're roughly within the estimated range of the threat. As such, based on the signal strength of the lock and if the signal strength is flashing, you should consider defensive measures. In the center of the aircraft symbol are two hemispheres. The upper B hemisphere, when lit, indicates that the priority threat is above you, and the lower H hemisphere indicates that the priority threat is below you. They are mutually exclusive in general estimates. Let's now jump into the mission editor and discuss some of the programming options.
The real SPO 15LM for this version of the Fulcrum is modular and its library can be changed using a cartridge by the ground crew. Of the four thread types, four of the six can be edited, but not the Pi or X types. In practice, changing the thread library was rare. As such, changing the threat library is not freely available to the pilot. Instead, there are two options to choose the threat types. The stock program library of the threats is based on Warsaw Pack settings for their MiG-29s. This corresponds to the default types we've reviewed. Threats not in the program library can still be detected, but they may not be classified correctly. The automatic program library, which is the default, has its library generated automatically based on the threat radars in the mission. These radars are then assigned to the appropriate threat types we discussed. Radars that operate in frequency outside the SPO 15 LM's detection capability are not included in the program library. If two or more threats overlap in azimuth, the higher threat will take priority. If a threat is detected, like an active radar homing missile operating in X-band, it will be an F-type classification. Such a missile in active guidance would appear as an F-type threat with a rapid increase in signal strength as it closes. The program method is selected from the Airplane Group Window, Aircraft Additional Properties tab, and then select the desired setting from the SPO 15 LM Threat Program dropdown. The threat program is also listed on the kneeboard that lists each threat radar and the types that it is assigned to. Some of the biggest limitations to bear in mind are when the onboard radar is operating, the forward hemisphere of the SPO 15 LM is disabled due to limitations with this version of the MiG 29. The threat relative elevation lights only operate when the signal strength is quite high. As such, by the time you receive relative altitude information, you may already be well within enemy weapon range. It's possible for the SPO 15 LM to incorrectly classify high PR signals as continuous wave signals. In such a case, you may see a flashing X type indication. This is something to keep in mind when you have both fourth generation aircraft and Hawk SAMs in the same mission. A continuous wave radar and a pulse radar along the same azimuth and mode could be mistakenly classified as a Type C and trigger a Type Pi indication. There are other limitations, but we suggest a careful read of the SPO 15 LM white paper about these. Let's now talk about the Fulcrum's Countermeasure Dispenser System, or CMDS, that consists of the 60 26 mm chaff and flare cartridges. Naturally, flares are meant to decoy infrared guided missiles, and chaff is designed to decoy radar and radar guided missiles. They are stored in the two vertical stabilizer routes. The system is powered by the aircraft system switch at the back of the right console, and readiness is indicated by the flare ready lamp next to the SPO 15 power switch. From the mission editor, we can load 60 flares, 60 chaff, or 30 flares and 30 chaff. This is a simple way to set up the CMDS. Let's now look at the more detailed CMDS options from the DTC. From Edit, we'll select DTC Manager. And we'll create a new program from File and then New. Select the Weapon tab and then the CMDS tab. Each activation of the dispense button located on the throttle with the control manager action name of flare dispense button dispense will release two salvos, salvo A and then salvo B. Each salvo can be programmed. Burst count 1 and 2 determine how many countermeasures are released in each salvo. If you have both chaff and flares loaded, both will be released at the same time. 
There's no separate dispense options between chaff and flares. The burst interval determines the dispense time between each release within a burst salvo. The salvo interval determines the time between each salvo. The salvo count air and salvo count ground determine the number of salvos expended with each press of the CMDS dispense button and is based on the position of the CMDS switch on the instrument panel. Let's talk about that now. In the center of the instrument panel is the emergency jettison button and the CMDS program selector switch. To jettison all countermeasures in case of an emergency, press and hold the emergency jettison button on the instrument panel. The CMDS program switch has three settings, ground, forward hemisphere, and rear hemisphere. Each press of the CMDS dispense button activates two salvos by default, but the number of salvos and their characteristics are based on the program switch setting, DTC settings, the attack hemisphere, and altitude. If ground mode is selected and you press the fire launch button or the dispense button on the throttle, salvo A and salvo B will dispense as program regardless of the hemisphere and altitude. When set to forward hemisphere or FHS and your altitude is less than 6,000 meters, salvo A and salvo B will dispense as programmed. If, however, you are above 6,000 meters, two salvo A's will be released and two salvo B's will be released. If rear hemisphere or RHS is selected and you are above 6,000 meters, four salvo A's and four salvo B's will be released. And if you're below 6,000 meters, two salvo A's and two salvo B's will be released. Below is the total number of remaining cartridges in groups of 20. That's an overview of using the Fulcrum's RWR in CMDS defensive systems. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks.